and good morning. A very warm welcome on a very cold day to St Mark's morning service. Um, I'm sure on a day as cold as this, some of you are quite glad that you're tucked up at home rather than in the church building. Although, of course, it is a, a sadness that we can't be here gathered in this wonderful place together. Just a quick check to make sure you can hear me. Give me a wave if everything is okay in terms of sound. Fantastic. We're hoping the day will soon come when we have Wi-Fi in the church and we don't have to rely on a shaky mobile hotspot. We're working on that and that will be hopefully with us soon. Now, I don't need to give you the usual uh, garb about making sure you keep wearing your masks and social distancing because you are at home in your households. So relax, you can sing the songs, um, you can be free of a, of a mask constricting your face this morning. Although myself and John, who's here with me, will be taking the usual social distancing precautions. Couple of notices for you as we begin our service. And the first one is a, a, a shout out from the group with no name. Now, I'm sure you all know that the group with no name is a young people's group at, here at St. Mark's. And got a message from Edward and Marie who lead that. And they say this, they say, for many years, Group With No Name uh, has been a time of fun and relaxation for our young people in church, mixed with some prayer time. We managed to keep the group running online despite the pandemic, but with another lockdown and homeschooling in full flow, we'd be very grateful if there is another adult who'd be willing to help out. Group With No Name runs every other week, Thursday evenings from 6.30 to 7.45 on Zoom at the moment. Um, and they chat, they play games online, things like that. Um, but every session uh, needs two adults present for safeguarding reasons. So if you're able to be the second adult, or you feel like you can contribute by preparing and playing some games or organizing a quiz, please let either Marie or Edward or myself, if you don't know how to get in touch with them, know. Um, this doesn't have to, be, have to be a lasting commitment. It's just uh, some help during this lockdown because our other youth leaders are doing lots and lots of other things um, on top of their normal working lives, um, homeschooling kids, things like that. Uh, other notices, uh, remember we have our morning reflections on Monday and Friday, uh, usually from John and from Andrew, although that's going to be expanding to a few other people as well in the coming weeks. Uh, we have our online morning prayer on a Wednesday morning at 9.15, uh, which is on Zoom, and 6 p.m. every day, the literics and a few of us gather together for prayers, just five, 10 minutes of prayer every day at 6 p.m., which is a lovely time together. Uh, Bill Shin, the funeral for the Reverend Bill Shin will take place at North Hearts Crematorium this Tuesday at 11. Uh, obviously very few people will be able to attend in person, um, but it will be live streamed. So check the notices that you've been sent for that. Um, and then a couple of other things. If you've not yet managed to book onto a, a safeguarding course um, and you're involved in any ministry in the church that, that needs that, uh, please do book onto one of those courses online as soon as possible. Um, and then the last thing to say is obviously now that we've gone into another lockdown, um, there are going to be people feeling uh, even more isolated than they have been. And so it's really important that we check in with one another. So the C19 groups that everyone was originally put in when this all started, they're still active, they're still there. So please, you know, get in touch with a couple of people from those groups. If you're not in a group, let me know and I'll, I'll put you in the group. Um, but it would be great at this time if we can really look out for one another. So that's it from the notices. So now I hand over to John, who is going to lead us into our worship this morning. Morning from me. Lovely to see you all. It's slightly alarming to see myself on the screen there. No, it's good to see you all. Welcome to worship. Let's have a moment's quiet before we start. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. When I say our prayer of preparation. Join me if you wish. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
and we come before our gracious God in penitence. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Savior Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to love and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the collect for this Sunday, when we mark the baptism of Christ. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us who are born again by water and the Spirit, that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our first hymn for this morning is Here I Am to Worship. Some of you will know this well, some of you not at all. We did introduce it last Sunday, and I hope you'll enjoy either singing it or listening to it again. Here I Am to Worship.
And now Joy is going to read our first lesson. Joy, you're muted. <laughs> is that better? Yep. <laughs> Sorry. Start again. The first lesson is Acts chapter 19, verses 1 to 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the inland regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we had not even heard that there was a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what were you baptized then? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. Thank you very much, Joy. Um, I'm just going to wait for two seconds while my glasses finish de-steaming. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism for the repentance of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were, baptizing him by, were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for your word this morning. And in these words that I've prepared, I pray you would speak. I pray people would hear your voice and be comforted this morning. Amen. Amen. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. A voice from a father to a son, from a parent to a child. Powerful words of affirmation. Words that would help any human being to flourish. Words some of us have been privileged to grow up hearing from our own parents. But for some of us, words that we never heard or didn't hear often enough. Those words, the questions and emotions in many of us, myself included. Emotions around our experience with our own earthly fathers or mothers. Raising questions about whether we can see God as a father. For some people, that parental idea of God 
is a great comfort. For others, it's a problem. So in this sermon, we're going to explore those words on three levels. On a divine to divine level, between God the Father and God the Son. On a human to human level, uh, what those words or a lack of those words can mean for us in our human relationships. And then on a divine to human level, do those words from the Father apply to us? Can they apply to us? So to start with, on that divine to divine level, I've kind of, I've sometimes wondered why is God so pleased with Jesus? I mean, Jesus hasn't actually done anything yet. These words are spoken before Jesus goes to the cross, before he's done any miracles, before he's offered any teaching to his disciples, before he even has any disciples. Thus far, Jesus has been born. He's upset his parents by running away. And he spent about 30 years in obscurity in a back end town in the middle of nowhere. So surely that doesn't merit a well-pleased from God. Now that probably says something around my psychology about achievement and self-worth, uh, but that's a different matter. We'll leave that one for today. Because this statement by God isn't about what Jesus has done or not done. It's about who Jesus is. It's a fundamental statement about Jesus' identity, a confirmation of the relationship between Jesus, the Son, and God the Father. Here, right at the beginning of Mark's Gospel, it's made clear that Jesus, he's no mere rabbi. He's not a, a wannabe Messiah. This is the Son of God, one who is in perfect relationship with God, one who is God's very self manifested to this world completely in tune with God, because he is, he is himself divine. It's an exalted heavenly reality of a father-son, parent-child relationship, bursting into our earthly existence, the heavens torn apart, and the voice of a father speaking those words of affirmation, you are my beloved son, I'm pleased with you. Not because of anything Jesus has done at this point, but simply because of who he is. Now, slightly more mundane perhaps, but actually in many ways no less powerful. Let's think about those words or words like them on our human to human level between a human parent and their child. Often our own experience of this kind of affirmation or lack of experience of it has an impact on how we feel about the idea of God as father. If we haven't received that, that affirmation from our parents or those who acted as parents to us, that can be painful. We can be reluctant to think of God as our father. Or it can go the other way. Our negative experience of our human parents can make us all the more pleased and joyful to have someone we can call a perfect, loving father. You see, either way, receiving loving, affirming words from our parents or not, has a huge impact on us. Parental affirmation is vital to a child's development. When we don't receive those words, all kinds of difficulties can emerge. And I think we know that to be true without doing any psychology, just from looking at movies. Okay, I watch a lot of movies, probably too many. Um, and it is a classic kind of movie cliche, the character who, having been denied affection from their parents for some reason is driven to prove themselves to the parent or to the world. So my favorite movie of all time, Cool Runnings, there's Junior Bevel who stands firm in his choice to be a Jamaican bobsledder until his disappointed father finally becomes proud. Or there's Tony Stark in the Iron Man movies, for those who've seen them, who seeks, he's driven like an almost mad driving force to, to, be, uh, to, be, to seek fame and to seek adulation because of what he perceived as his father's lack of love for him. And then there's the epic gladiator where Commodus kills his own father, the emperor Marcus Aurelius, after saying to him, I searched the faces of the gods for ways to please you, to make you proud. One kind word from you, one full hug, would have been like the sun on my heart for a thousand years. What is it in me that made you hate me so much? That powerful 
sometimes joyful, sometimes destructive experience around affirmation from our parents. And it's a common movie cliche because it's a common, powerful human experience. Many people grow up feeling like their parents are disappointed in in them in some way, or sometimes they feel like the parents' love was conditional. Sometimes with the best will in the world, for whatever reason, parents just weren't good at expressing their love. So we may have gotten the message, correctly or incorrectly, that we'd be loved if our grades improved, if we did our chores, if we won the tennis match, if, if, if. And a lack of affirmation or only conditional affirmation can have psychological consequences. I was reading this week about the Dutch psychiatrist Conrad Bars, who he fought in the the French resistance in World War II. He was arrested and imprisoned in a uh, concentration camp. Um, When he was released, uh, he moved to America and and wrote psychology around childhood uh, and emotional disorders that develop. And he and and a lady called Anne Teru, they identified a syndrome called emotional deprivation disorder, EDD, to describe a collection of symptoms that a person can grow up uh, to experience following a lack of affirmation in childhood. Symptoms like discomfort in social settings, emotional disconnection from others, egocentric behavior, anxiety, a need for reassurance, oversensitivity, indecisiveness, people pleasing, inadequacy, guilt, and many other things resulting from that lack of affirmation. Now, just to say, I'm aware from my own experiences in this, that we're treading on sensitive ground here. Um, So if anyone is listening to this and they're feeling uncomfortable because this rings true for them in their experience, then please don't hesitate to get in touch with me or someone else you trust if you want to speak to them. I'm, I'm not a counselor. Uh, but I can be a listening ear and I can signpost people towards more professional help if they need it, because this is a really difficult issue for some people. Put simply, humans need to receive love, affirmation, acceptance in order to flourish. On a human to human level, any person wants and needs to hear those words from a parental figure. You are my beloved son, my beloved daughter, I love you. I'm pleased with you. But what about on a divine to human level? How does what we're talking about relate to our relationship with God? You know, we speak of God as our father. We pray the prayer, our father in heaven. And yet I think that the stereotype many people have of Christianity is that God is angry with us and that we're wretched, rubbish people. And You know, we know from the start of this service, the communion service, that we do put a focus right at the beginning of the service on confession, on looking at our failings, our sins. And such a view of human identity, it might seem to resonate more with those symptoms of of, uh, emotional deprivation disorder than the idea of loving affirmation from our Father God. That's what what it might seem like to many. But I think here we have to work our nuance muscles a bit. Work our nuance muscles because that language of sin and and confession is not, or or doesn't need to be at least, from a place of feeling worthless before God. Rather, it's because of God's love for us that we are confident enough to be honest before God about our failings, knowing that no matter how much we've got wrong in our lives, in the week, in the day before this one, this morning, no matter how much we've got wrong, it doesn't change God's love for us one bit. It's a bold statement of our worth that we can freely acknowledge our weakness. Let me just say that again. It's a bold statement of our worth that we can freely acknowledge our weakness. God loves us. We may not be divine in the way that Jesus was, but we are made in the image of God. We have God's stamp upon us, the profound ability to love that humans have, the profound ability to reason, the profound ability to create. Gifts from God to us, made in his image, 
And each one of us, as Psalm 139 puts it, is fearfully and wonderfully made, knit together by God in the womb. And the entire world around us is created for our enjoyment, with the senses of touch, taste, sound, smell, and sight that enable that enjoyment. God didn't need a world for himself. God is complete in himself. But in his overflowing love and generosity, he created a world for us and placed us in it because he loves us. God certainly isn't pleased with everything we do. How, how could he be? But that doesn't change his love for who we are. A human parent might get impatient with their child's mistakes, might struggle to see the good in their child, might struggle to get beyond their own hurts and hang-ups. But our Heavenly Father never loses sight of who we are, no matter how much muck we cover ourselves in. The New Testament describes us repeatedly as children of God, describes how through our baptism into Christ, we are adopted into the divine family and can call God Father. Not in the flawed and limited sense of our own experience, of our own parents, but the true understanding of fatherhood in which we can hear those words for ourselves. You are God's beloved son, God's beloved daughter. With you, he is well pleased. Amen. Thank you, Nick. We join together now in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, mm -hmm. suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was married. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. And with that faith in our hearts, let us offer our prayers of intercession. As Nick said, put simply, we need love. And we are offered that love through our Father. And again, in that confidence of love from God through Jesus, we offer our prayers first for families. We give thanks for the love that abounds in so many families that we know. We give thanks for the love that we have received. And we pray for those who lack love. We pray for families where tensions are high, especially at this time. We pray for children deprived of affection. And we pray for all who try to help them. We pray for our families in this church, rejoicing at the gifts they share with us and the love that they give us to strengthen us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for divine love in this world. Over the past week or so, we have seen scenes of hatred and division We have seen anger, 
we have seen falsehood and we come with penitence but also in hope and we pray for our leaders wherever they are as they face the demands of this present situation but also our sisters and brothers in the United States as they face a new future. We commend our American friends and that great nation to God's love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray that God's love may abound in our churches. We pray for St. Mark's. We give thanks for Nick's ministry and pray a blessing on Isabel and himself as they work with us and share their lives here. We pray for the other churches in Hitchin and ask that each of us may witness to God's love in a troubled world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those in greatest need at this time. Remember those most deeply affected by the lockdown Those who are lonely, anxious for themselves and for others. And those with long-term illness. And in the quietness of this morning, we remember any for whom we have a special care. May they know the love and the healing of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And remember those who have died. We give th thanks especially for the life of the Reverend Bill Shin, our dear brother. May he rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we pray for ourselves, asking that we may be strengthened in the love of Christ, that we may know that God is pleased with us, and that we may know his strength and love for the days ahead. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So this is the part when you are all very welcome to unmute yourselves if you wish. You can unmute yourselves and we can share the piece together. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's share peace together. Peace be with peace you. Be with you. Peace 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 be with you.
Peace be with you, everyone. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Here's your mic. Fantastic. So now, if someone um, in the in the Zoom who has um, hosting rights could mute everybody, because um, it's time for the next song. And as always, we 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 want to avoid the sound of. How rude, you muted me as well. I don't think there was any option but to mute me then. So we're gonna sing our next hymn, Brightest and Best. And this is would be normally our offering hymn. Um, obviously we can't pass a collection plate around from house to house. Um, I don't think even the, the fastest sprinter among us could do that. Um, but obviously as always, you are welcome uh, to head to our website as it sees, says there and donate. Um, many of you, of course, donate through the banks uh, via standing orders. And I know so many people in this church give in so many other ways. So we'll sing our hymn in a moment. But first, I'm just going to pray. Lord God, thank you for the gifts you have given us, the gifts of our senses to appreciate the world, the gifts of a beautiful world, even though at the moment it's a troubled world, but nonetheless a beautiful world to enjoy. Thank you for the gift of your son. Thank you for the gift of calling you our father, our parent. Thank you for the love you give us, the affirmation you give us, that you love us and are pleased with us, no matter what we get wrong. And I pray that with the gifts that our people bring this morning or any other time, be they money or, or talents or time or anything else, Lord, I pray that we would use those gifts well to show love to one another, love to the world around us and to worship you. Amen. Amen. We sing brightest and best.
Lord is here. His, His Spirit is with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people that all who share, and gather into one in your kingdom, that all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of St. Mark and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. And so draw near with faith. And though we do not gather in person, yet still by the power of God, Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Do this in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you physically through the bread and cup, 
I ask you to come spiritually into my heart, O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother. May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. And so the body of Christ is broken for us. And the blood of Christ is shed for us. Amen. We continue with a hymn, O Worship the Lord. Let's pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights, give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
So that brings us almost to the end of the formal part of our service this morning. Uh, but remember, you can join us for after service coffee on Zoom. Um, and there's a link that you've been sent for that uh, on, I think, the same email that you got this link. Um, you will have to bring your own coffee, uh, but it'd be lovely to see some people there. And as always, if there's anything during the course of this service that you want to have a conversation about with me or with someone else, don't hesitate to get in touch. Um, it's always good to talk about the things we're, we're thinking about and, and feeling on a Sunday service. I hope you all stay well in the week ahead. Uh, do remember to, to look out for one another, to call one another and check in with each other um, at this challenging time. But for now, the blessing. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.